Perfect love cast out fear. Why should I ever be afraid? When I know you will always be right next to me. Uh, but my vision's kind of blurry. And sometimes I can't see your hand. But even in my darkest night, you'll always be there. Oh, when I trust in you, I do the thing that I was made to do. To live a life that fully rests in you. And all your promises for me. So I lay down all my worries, lay them down at your feet. Oh, when I trust in you, I do the thing that I was made to do, to live a life that fully rests in you, and all your promises for me. Good morning and welcome. I just want to welcome you today to our Living Word Home Church service. Uh, I'm Pastor Benny and I am so glad that you can be with us here today as we grow in the Word and in His Spirit. Amen. You know, last week we learned about gratitude and the power of gratitude and how gratitude filters the quality of our lives. Today we're going to learn uh, about another powerful friend of gratitude, which is encouragement. And you need to know that encouragement is synonymous with comfort. But before we get started, I just want to pray right now. Let's just bow our heads together and come together right now in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you for this word. We thank you that you promised us your word would not be returned void. We ask you to search our hearts, Lord, and, and bless us beyond measure as we receive all that you have for us. We thank you in Jesus' name and all the saints said, amen and amen. Well, we were talking about, again, the, the spiritual gift of encouragement. And again, like I said, uh, encouragement is synonymous with comfort. And I'm going to tell you folks, comfort is a powerful word that means to strengthen. It means to encourage, you know, and, and, and aid, to give, it gives hope. It alleviates grief. It lifts up one's spirit from loneliness and pain. You know, God does not comfort us to make us comfortable, but to make us a comforter. We live in a chronically negative world and we face discouragement daily. How many of you can relate to that? You know, maybe you were picked on when you were young or made fun of, you know, or made to feel different and not accepted. And that just carried on, you know. And maybe you, you or someone you love feel that you are nitpicked all the time. You know, these things happen on a day-to-day. -day. Maybe others' opinion of you 
may have affected you. Maybe someone feels that they are, are not being included or respected. Or maybe someone didn't get what they thought they deserved. You know, that apartment, that job, the raise, you know. There's always something. The list goes on and on. But I'm sure many of us can probably relate to some of these things. And, and, and maybe it brings up, you know, other discouragements that we faced in one way or another. But guess what? God calls you to be an encourager. While the world is, you know, again, tearing us down, God calls us to build others up. It is an incredibly spiritually, spiritually thing to build others up. You know, our God is an encouraging God. I'm going to share a story with you. You know, many, many years ago when I worked in corporate America, I worked in a company and, you know, the department I worked in was being, uh, again, consolidated. And so my position was going to be eliminated. And so the rumor around was that, you know, well, I was out of there, you know, I was gone. And for a minute there, it started to, I started to feel the discouragement. So I, I went to someone that I, you know, I had confidence in and I turned and shared a little of what was taking place and only one word that he had to say to bring me back. That's what it took. It encouraged me. It, it revealed to me who I was, who I was meant to be. And, and then all of a sudden, out of that, the comfort, the peace, and, and that hope came back. It was amazing how hearing a word of encouragement can just lift your spirit. Now, I want you to turn your Bibles right now to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5 and 6. He says, when we arrived in Macedonia, there was no rest for us. He said, we faced conflict with, from every direction. He said, with battles on the outside and fear on the inside. He said, but God, who encourages those who are discouraged, encouraged us by the arrival of, T of Titus. You know, Paul writes here because he's going through his own struggles. You know, and he states here that the encouragement that came from God and, and God's people. And it usually comes just like that. You know, people need to know that someone cares and that we need to know that God cares, folks. God cares. Turn to someone. Say something to someone. God cares. You know, sometimes a song uh, someone shares with us or a, a text or someone prayed for you, and that's exactly what we need. You know, we're going to focus on a few of the most spiritual things that, that you can actually do when that happens. And the number one is encourage others daily. We need to encourage others daily. I want you to turn your Bibles right now to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, He is the Father who is full of mercy, the God of all comfort. He said, He comforts us every time we have trouble so that when, we, when others have troubles, we can comfort them with the same comfort God gives us. See, God's desire is not only to comfort us, but He wants us to also give back that comfort to a hurting world. You heard me? He wants us to give back to the hurting world. This is something that, that doesn't come too natural uh, for us, you know, at least not for some of us. So it has to be intentional. Often the voices we hear in our head may give us reasons why we shouldn't take the time to encourage others. Like, I don't have much to give or to offer. You know, no one ap appreciates what I do. You know, but it's, it's so important to encourage one another daily. Let's find out why in the book of Hebrews, and I want you to turn right now to the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 13. He said, but encourage each other every day while you still have something called today. He said, help each other so that None of you will be fooled by sin and become hard to the change. See, he says, he wants you to focus. He said, don't give in to what you feel. Because sometimes it can get hard to change if you are so discouraged so often. What is the scripture saying here as to why we should encourage each other? Think about it a minute. Because if we leave that discouragement to build up long enough, it hardens our hearts. And those walls we build up become very hard to break down. 
You know, encouragement and comfort breaks up the bitterness that builds up in our spirit from constant discouragement. Folks, that's very deep. I need us to sort of look at what God is asking us to do. I want you to turn your Bibles right now to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. He says, we should think about each other to see how we can encourage each other to show love and to do good works. He said, we must not quit meeting together as some are doing. He says, no, we need to keep on encouraging each other. This becomes more and more important as you see the day getting closer. You know, a good habit to get into right now is if you need to hear a word of encouragement, then give someone a word of encouragement. And if you know that it's beneficial, then say to someone, what are you gonna say? Whatever it is that you feel you need in that moment, do it to someone else. That brings us to, again, number two, encouragement or encourage others spiritually. Say it, encourage others spiritually. A simple good job on that project. You know, hey, house looks nice. Oh, look, I like the haircut, like those shoes, you know, you know, let's try it this week. You know, even try it on a stranger if you can. But remember, try something. Don't, do not not do anything because that's not going to help. I want you to turn your Bibles right now to the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 10 through 12. He says, every time I pray, I always remember you. He said, God knows this is true. He is the one I serve with all my heart by telling people the good news about his son. He said, I pray that I will allow, that I will be allowed to come to you. He said, it will happen if God wants it. See, I want every, every he says, I want very much to see you and give you some spiritual gifts to make your faith stronger. I mean, that I want us to help each other with the faith that we have. He says, your faith will help me and my faith will help you. I know that was a mouthful. I want, you to, I want you to read it. I want you to take time with that and break it down. Take a minute, let it absorb it. Let it saturate in you. I want you to get into the word this week in, in preparing yourself to be encouraging to others. Remember, Encouragement is spiritually contagious. When you see the way a man truly loves his wife, it's contagious. I love that. I want that. You know, when you see those with a passion to, to invite people to church, it's, it encourages others to do the same thing. It encourages me. So let's put that to work this week. Or oh, when you see someone who loves worshiping, oh, isn't that a blessing? That's an amazing blessing to see happening. Be a witness. Acknowledge the small and simple things, right? It changes, you know, this changes everything. People don't always get the credit they deserve. So sometimes you doing it unexpectedly may just reach, reach that individual. Like, wow, God gave you a gift. Congrats on that promotion. You were faithful in small ways and God blessed you. You know, let's look for things to say. You know, there are tons of things to say. But remember, if you, can, if you want to hear it, do it first. Sometimes when people are hurting, our instinct is usually to offer a solution or to try to fix it for them by helping them cover, you know, correct it. Instead, encourage someone who is hurting. Don't preach down to them. Lift them up. There are some devastating storms go going on in, in people's lives today. You know, and there are deep wounds that are, they need, a ref need refreshment. And need, they need a fresh re word of encouragement. Let's give it to them. You know, you don't, don't look at their appearance to see, they're waiting to see something like that. Don't wait for that. You may not see it. It may not be evident like that. You know, if someone is going through a divorce, instead of saying, oh, I'm sorry, you know, have faith and pray, 
You know, you can just say, you know, that must be so painful. I'm sorry, I, I can't even imagine. But I'm here to listen, you know, and I will pray for you. No, if someone is sick, you can say, I, I, I'm so sorry you're sick. You know, I'm believing with you for your healing. Simple as that. That brings us to number three. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Sometimes you got to preach to yourself. I love this about David. You know, the situation with David. I want you to turn your Bibles right now to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. He says, All the men in the army were sad and angry because their sons and daughters were taken as prisoners. He said, the men were taking, uh, he said, we're talking about uh, killing David with stones. This upset David very much, but he found strength in the Lord his God. I want you to read 1 Samuel chapter 30 so you know what's taking place. You know, David and his men were out fighting battles. And when they came back, they found their, 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 their enemies came in and, and took their, their family, took everything that they owned. And the, and the, and the arm, his army, his people were, were, were grieved. They were in pain to the point that they wanted to kill him as if it was his fault. You know, we're always looking to blame someone. You know, we need to have faith. I have faith for this. My God is with me. My God is for me. God has given me everything I need. My God will work it out. My God will make a way. This is how we, folks, can encourage ourselves in the Lord. Remind yourself of the testimonies God has given you. Don't fall trapped to discouragement. Don't let it happen. Number four, keep encouragement on file. You heard what I just said, right? Keep your encouragements on file. Right? What does that mean? Just have it available so you can remind yourself. Save that in a voicemail. Save that on a card that, or on a letter. You know, save the text or the screenshot that you got. Remember the moment. Write that conversation you had with that person. You know, keep note of it. Sometimes we need to keep those things available to us as we go through things in life. That's what it's there for. God is calling you to be an, be an encouragement. But what, what does that mean? What does it mean to be an encouragement? Daily, folks, daily. Spiritually and to yourself. Now I'm going to say this again so you can repeat it to someone. God is calling you to be an encouragement daily, folks, spiritually and to yourself. Turn your Bible to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. We sent Timothy, who is our brother and co-worker, see, in God's service and spreading the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you in your faith so that you so that no one would be unsettled by these trials for you know quite well that we are destined for them did you hear that last line trials are coming yeah inevitable hold yourself to his word to his promise number five Encourage others publicly. Think about that. Publicly. What does that mean to you? I want you to turn your Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. So Jesus was baptized. As soon as he came up out of the water, the sky opened, and he saw God's Spirit coming down on him like a dove. A voice from heaven said, this is my son, the one I love, and I'm very pleased with him. See, God, you'll never know how God will use you. 
You know, take a time this week right now. Because I want to be able to pray with you right now. If you're going through something, if you feel that, you know, haven't heard that word because we need me, you know, there's some things you need to hear that will lift your spirit up. So often we just, you know, stand there just waiting for someone to come. Don't wait for someone to come. Be the one that's going to encourage someone first. Let God speak to you as you speak to someone else. It's important to acknowledge people. You know, I love this about this church. We have a way of acknowledging. We have people who work during the picnic and work during the, to, to prepare the, the opening outdoors. The people that just invest behind the scenes, all the leaders, all those that do so much. And when one, and, and in this church, we encourage each other. We let them know, we let them know how they are, are valued and appreciated for what, all that they do. Don't let this fall into the cracks, folks. Don't take it for granted. Lift up that voice that God has given you. Speak that truth. Let his word speak through you. It's amazing that so often Paul spoke out of his own pain and his grief. But it's all about encouraging because he can see things through God's eyes. He already had the victory already. So I want you to stand firm today as we prepare, Lord, to pray. I want you to bow your heads, Father. We just thank you for those that are, need a word of encouragement. That they need to hear, Lord, something that you want them to hear right now in this moment. We ask you to speak to their heart, mind, soul, and spirit. That you will lift them up, Lord. Strengthen them, encourage them, and build them up, Lord. To be a tall tower in you, Lord. Lord, let, it, let them truly see things through your eyes and not their own. We thank you for that victory they have already. Even before they pray this prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Remember, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. I want you to join us in our Q&A right after this, livingword.nyc. If you have any prayer, any requests, I want you to join our website and we'll just be able to stay connected. Amen. Thank you for all that we have and for that wonderful picnic we had. Uh, thank you for, for being a part of it and joining us and sharing and providing. It's always wonderful to be able to see what God can do. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Take care.